Welcome back, gang. It's Delta from DeltiasGaming.com here with the brief guide for a new mythic in the High Isles, and that's Sea Serpent Coil. This is what I've been looking forward to for a while. What it does, while at full health, you get a 40% damage reduction. After taking damage while at full health in combat, you gain Serpent's Rebuke. For 10 seconds, you snare yourself by 40%, but you gain Major Berserk, increasing your damage done by 10%, and you gain Major Courage, giving you weapon and spell damage by 430. There are some pros and cons with this one piece mythic that comes in your neck but i think it's really good in pvp especially in battlegrounds in duels and sometime in solo pve because those two important buffs are really hard to get a hold of think no longer using olemeyer on your back bar as a magpar got a lot of flexible options in this video i'm going to show you how to get the leads and how to use it all right first thing up with the mythic leads there's five leads to get if you don't know you have to have Graymore dlc or eso plus to even access these mythics you have to level up your scrying and excavation to level level seven to get the gold mythic leads. So that's where I would start first. Once you've got that done, now you need to track down one of five of the leads. The first one up is Black Pearls. This is obtained by giant clam nodes close to the water in the High Isles. Basically what you do is travel along the starter area when you get into High Isles right on the beach. There's going to be these clam nodes which you can loot. They actually have really good alchemy mats. It took me about 20 to 30 minutes and I got them both on PCEU and PCNA. Really easy one to get. Just walk along, loot, you'll get it quickly. Next up, Frigid Sapphire. This is a world boss in the Rift, the west-southwest side. So what you do here is stack on top of everybody and sit there and try to kill it. Keep this in mind. When you're doing this, especially if on consoles or at launches, there's going to be a bunch of people standing around. It's the top 12 damage sources that get this. If you're not the top 12 damage dealer, you're not even going to get a chance to get the loot. So you need to spec for heavy damage and do ground-based AoEs. Realize these are on a five-minute timer. So you can set a timer, go far around and do another mythic, come back right as it's about to pop. Put a bunch of ground-based AoEs like caltrops barb trap blockade do whatever and as soon as the procs drop an ulti and get ready to nuke it top 12 damage source you get a chance for the lead you're good to go next up we're going to do one that was somewhat painful and that is mage guild daily quest reward coffers grotwood stormhaven or deshawn i went with the stormhaven mages guild so you can do a mages guild daily one time per character unless someone shares the quest with you so a good idea here is to get with your guild buddy up with someone go do the quest and then the other player grabs another quest and shares it so you can stay on that same character and just roll through these mages guild quests and then you can hop into another character and your buddies can hop into another character and do the exact same thing this took me about an hour to get a few mages guild quests what they're going to have you do is just go to a public dungeon zip on to the end boss and then just loot something and zip on back really easy not too time consuming but the best strat here is to groove up with friends share the quest one at a time and you can get a lot of quests in very quickly. Next up is Jewelry Survey. This is any zone. So if you don't know, when you do crafting writs per character, especially jewelry, you get a chance to get a survey. Those surveys have high yields. They have a bunch of nodes that give you a lot of materials when you loot them. Basically, what you need to do is do a lot of jewelry crafting. So I would level up a character. I think it's at least level six is when you can start doing crafting writs. If you own the game, I think you can make any eight to nine characters straight away. So if you don't have all your character slots maxed out, I would start brand new characters, do the introductionary quest in your starter area. Daggerfall Covenant is Glenumbra. Takes a few seconds to complete the starter area quest to introduce you to these writs, specifically jewelry. I would unlock them all, including alchemy. So Mages Guild and Fighters Guild is where you pick these up. And then once you got them, now you can start doing them per character per day. So the more characters you have, the more chances you are to get a survey. Once you get a survey, it needs to be any zone. Doesn't matter where the zone is. Then you go do it. And then from one of these nodes, the high yield nodes, you have a chance to proc this mythic lead. So if you're on consoles watching this, what I would do is start saving your jewelry surveys and get ready to unload on them when this goes live. But this is pretty easy. Took me just a couple to get done. And then last one up, we have Serpent Bog World Boss in the High Isles. This is another one. It's kind of 
a tricky world boss actually to solo. The best thing I can give you uh, tips on when you're soloing this, if people aren't around, is there's a red AOE ads that will target you and put a little thing on your feet. If you don't line a sight kind of kite, you will actually get one shot and be completely destroyed. It took me a little bit of time to actually be able to beat this solo. And there's not a lot of people around doing this. So I would say group up with a buddy or ask in zone, hey, such and such serpent bog world boss is up. Who wants to help me beat it? Because it can be hard for the newer average player. So those are your five mythics. Once you got those all combined, you go scry them up. So you go dig them up, collect them. And then when you have all five combined, bang, you get the super powerful mythic. Sea Serpent's Coil. So here's an example of what I'm using right now for the high aisles, and that's PvP. Mechanical Acuna on my front bar, Magma Incarnate, and Iron's Blood on the back bar. Iron's Blood already gives me a huge snare, reducing my movement speed by 50% when it's proc, but gives me damage reduction by 30%, so I'm pretty much used to this. I have been running Markin's Ring. What I did was I just swapped out Markin's on the ring and put Sea Serpent Coil in the neck and another Iron's Blood blood ring. So two irons blood ring and swapped it. Running the same thing with three infused. I actually tanked my max health to make sure that this was really, really tanky. So I was right around 26 to 25,000 in battlegrounds, which is no CP. If you know me, usually I run around 28 to 32,000 to make sure I'm pretty survivable, but I wanted to see just how much this really helped in survivability. And I will say off the initial impressions for a sweaty battleground, I was able to survive like crazy. When C Serpent Coil procs, along with Mechanical Acuity, the burst on a Magpar is absolutely bananas. The way around dealing with the snare is a couple things. Number one is toppling charge, having a gap closer. Would this work on a Magic Dragon that doesn't have a gap closer? I don't know. I usually run Irons by the super tanky back bar setup because I get dogpiled a lot of times in Cyrodiil and in Battlegrounds. So I'm used to the snare already. Now the Iron Blood snare is 50%. And the Sea Serpent Coil is 40%. So major expedition with Race Against Time on my back bar, along with one or two Swift on the jewelry, I think is the way to counter Sea Serpent Coil and not have it be so annoying if you're not used to it, along with the Gap Closer to really cramp up your mobility. Something I did notice when initially doing this, I dodge rolled a little bit to get out of the big, huge AoE because I wasn't able to use my mobility like I normally would. So something I switched from was the Ghastly Food to Bewitch sugar skulls and then ramped up my sustain with magic recovery glyphs on my jewelry. So you're going to have to play around with this to see if it works for you. I'd highly recommend this for either solo PVE, especially in arenas, if you want to blow through content because major berserk and major courage is so strong, specifically on a gap closer, a magpar or something else that doesn't rely solely on super fast speed for survivability. It's crazy to combine this with something I've already been using irons blood. You can't cleanse the snares off and the snares don't stack with each other. So you're not going to be 90% snared with these two things active. So you're going to see a lot of reduction in movement, but you can easily counter that with major expedition and a couple swift. My too long didn't read here is collect this mythic, experiment with it. It's very, very strong because of those two buffs, especially with mechanical acuity. Will this be meta for every single class? No, I don't think a lot of people can deal with the snare and survive, unlike me and my magpar, but I would say it's worth collecting, putting the next slot, shifting around a ring slot to see if it works for you because I was doing really, really well in high MMR battlegrounds and I love this set and I'm looking for my Magpar. Another reason you're going to want to use this Sea Serpent Coil is it's a great anti-gank. So with a 40% damage reduction, when someone opens up on you, usually they're going to use an end cap, a heavy attack, and overload something. This 40% damage reduction is insane. It's super noticeable when someone unloads with an ultimate, especially Another cool combination you can combine with this if you can't stand getting ganked is the Monster Helm Zoles. You can get this from an Imperial City and when you break free, it stuns. It's a counter gank. Even going further with the Slippery CP passive. So Zoles, Slippery CP passive, and Sea Serpent Coil is the 100% counter gank if you cannot stand getting ganked. Put this all together and you'll be incredibly survival against those annoying gankers. I will update my Magpar PvP build, but I need to do a little bit more testing in Cyrodiil and Imperial City to make sure this works in open world along with Iron's Blood or if I'm just getting too snared too often and I die. So look for that video soon, but this is updated from what I'm using today on my website. Hope this helps you out and I appreciate you watching.